Hope everyone's day is going well. In this video, we are going to continue on with our Formula One web design and we are going to create this animation that you see on your screen. What happens is there is a sort of loader for when the website loads and when it, once it's done loading, it shows the first slide and then you've got a progress bar and right after that progress bar is finished for the first slide, I think it has a duration of four seconds, it will transition into the next slide. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing to note is that you need to have Protopie uh, already opened and Adobe XD open as well. So what I went ahead and did is when I opened up Protopie, I just switched the device to 1920 at 1080 at 1x. And what we need to do is import our entire XD assets into Protopie. And rather than doing it one by one, Protopie has an awesome import feature and you'll just select Adobe XD select the slide or the artboard that you want to import and select the import size. In this case, we're just gonna go with an import size of 1X. And that will import all your assets. Unfortunately, we weren't very clean when we designed this project in Adobe XD. All the layers that were imported don't necessarily have the correct names, nor are they grouped together correctly. So that causes an issue when animating because we want to have unique names for each layer and we also want to group them to the corresponding section that they're in. So what I need to do now is go ahead and select each layer and add it in its correct group and also give it a correct name. So I'm just going to cut here and in the next screen you'll see the updated layer names. Now I went ahead and renamed all of our layers so we could see that if we select slide one content it is grouped into uh, the slide one content and then the, you got the headline, you got the FOM button, the article tag and similar to like slide two content if I decide this, this is a slide two content and then slide one, slide two, yada yada yada. So everything is grouped correctly. One thing I am not going to do in this tutorial is in fact replace these layers. So here's my biggest pet peeve with Protopie is w when I import from Adobe XD it doesn't pick up SVGs, nor does it pick up text layers. And what I mean by that is if we zoom into, let's just say drivers, if I can just find the right key, there we go. It's all pixelated and that is because what Protopie is doing is it is taking all the assets from XD, turning it into images and displaying it here. So everything you see on here is just an image. Um, and the cool thing is that you can actually replace these images, but it's going to be pretty time consuming. I think that if you're working on a project that you're going to present, definitely do this. And the way you do this is if I select performance, you can see that it's rendered as a text image and it gives me the option to convert to text. And if I convert to text, it will give me the text version that is in Protopie. This is cool, but it is annoying and I did this for the actual uh, animation that I showed early on in the video, but I'm not going to do this again because that file got corrupted and I was super annoyed about it. Um, but it's really no big deal. You can't really tell the difference unless you are really looking at the layers and seeing a bit of uh, pixelation, but that's fine in this case. This case is just more of a tutorial on correctly animating these different layers. So again, if you want to go ahead and turn these layers into the actual text formats, you can do so by selecting them and converting to text. Now let's finally go ahead and start this project. I'm going to first do is select a scene and create a new scene. This is for our uh, little loader that we had that went from 0 to 100% and once that was complete, it jumped from the uh, intro scene to the next scene. So scene 2 is going to be renamed to... Uh, loader and then scene one is just going to be called um, main page or something we'll just say main for now and what we did here was have a loader in place so let me pull up the actual file. so it's it just goes from 0 to 100 this progress bar is reaching the width of that 100% and then it transitions to the next scene let's go ahead and make that so what we need to do is select a shape of a rectangle and just get it to 1920 by 1080 and the color of this would be that dark blue which is 15151E and the next thing that we need to do is select a text layer and in the text layer we're just going to go ahead and give it a font size of 
48 pixels. We're gonna give it that formula one font and we'll just say display regular for now. For the color, we need it to be FFF and we need this item right here to be centered. So first we can center the text and then we can center the actual layer to the project. So we'll go ahead and select zero percent. Now certain layers and certain things will be a little bit off uh, with this project compared to the final animation. And that's because I don't have the, um, the actual project. It got corrupted. So none of the actual size sizes of the layers or the animations are going to be perfectly nailed, but I'll do my best to, to get it as accurate as possible. Since this went from zero to hundred, it calls for us to create a variable within protopy and to create a variable. All you need to do is open up the variable tab over here, select the plus sign, and then you can say uh, X for this scene. And the variable we're going to create is just a zero uh, number. Cause since this is going to be changing frequently. Now what we need to then do is add a trigger and the trigger what we're that we're going to add is just a start trigger for now. And in the start trigger, what we have is a bunch of reactions that we can create. And so what we need to do for this one is assign. We need to assign that variable to this text. So to do so, what we need to do is select the variable, add it there. And what we want this variable to do is add one every single time. So we can just say, if we open up this FX, we can say variable one, plus one and just leave it like so. And when we want to repeat this, we can just repeat this for now just a hundred times at an interval of 0 0.04. So this is going to repeat every single time. So it's going to add one, add one, add one, add one over and over. The next thing we need to do is select a text. And in the text, what we can do is go ahead and select the text layer. What we could do is select a formula and for our formula, what we need to uh, tell it to do is assign variable one and also add a percent symbol so that the percent symbol can always be added to the end of the number. Great. So we also need to do a repeat on this and let's do a hundred at an interval of the same 0 0.04. So let's go ahead and preview this. And if we replay this, you can see that it's going from zero to a hundred. Now we also need to do the same for a progress bar that we're going to set. So let's go ahead and select the rectangle, center it there, and let's turn the rectangle origin to center. I can select center and the widths of the rectangle initially would be zero with a height of three. And what happens is at the start, we're going to just scale the rectangle. So rectangle two is going to scale by a hundred and fifty pixels. And we can select this to be linear since we don't want any easing. And for the duration, we just want the exact duration of when the text will end. So it ends at four seconds. So we can just set the duration to four seconds. Perfect. Now we do need to change the color of our rectangle and to do so we just need to select rectangle and select a red. Leave the fill at 100, everything else looks great. So what happens in this project is once it's at 100%, the background goes up and reveals the image of slide one and then we jump to scene two or the main scene and then that animation starts. So let's go ahead and import the background image of the slide one. And we don't necessarily need to import. We could just copy slide one and paste it here. Just bring it behind this one. So we need to reveal slide one. But one thing I do want to mention is we have this sort of mask that comes into play. If we look at when it's 100%, the number is already gone before the rectangle even removes it. So that's just using a certain mask. And in Protopy, masking does not exist, or I don't believe it does yet. But what we could do is we can select a scroll container. And in our scroll container, we can drop the text layer and the rectangle. 
let's name rename this actually. We could just say progress. And progress bar. So we can add these two layers into the scroll container. And actually, first, let's center the scroll container and give it the proper widths and heights. So if the progress bar is down there, let's move it up a bit. We'll set it there and um, let's bring it down a notch. So it's at 620 for Y. The width is going to be back to zero. And now with the scroll container, let's just make it the same height as the actual text layer. And what we can do is grab these two items and just nest it within the container. And so we could just say mass layer for our container. And so what happens here is if we mess with the height of the mass layer, you can see that it's going to give us that kind of it's just that reveal effect without the need to mess with the opacity of the item. At four seconds, we'll add a four second delay, but we want to change the width, or sorry, the height of the mass layer. So select a scale and the mass layer and the height, set it to zero. You also want to make sure the origin is centered to the top since the height will go from the bottom to top. Now with the scale, once we've added the height to zero, we can add a duration of 0.6 and change this to cubic bezier to represent a point zero, or sorry, a 0 0.6, and then a point 0 0.05, point 0.2, and a point 0.9. The duration 0 0.6, the start delay, four seconds to when that progress bar is at 100%. So let's go ahead and preview this. Let's just refresh that, and once it's at 100%, it's gone. I think we can slow this down for the duration. Now, once that's happened, we need to scale the rectangle or the background. Let's rename this to background. We need to scale the background to zero. So set the origin to the top, add another scale. Make sure the delay is at 4.6 seconds. The duration at one second, it's going to have that same cubic bezier. 0 0.05, 0 0.2, 0 0.9. And the scale is a width of zero. Now, if we preview this, I think we should be done with the loader. We need one more thing, but. Oh, we, oh, sorry. We played with the width instead of the height. So get rid of the width, add the height of zero. And we know it's going to work, but what I do want to add is a jump. And what a jump is, is it allows us to jump from one scene to another. So if we select a jump, and we select, we want to jump to the main scene with a transition of none, a start delay of zero. What we could do is actually, sorry, not start delay of zero. I'm talking out of my ass. Uh, we want to put the, the jump at 5.5, 5.6. So that happens once that background image is revealed, we jump to the next screen. And it's going to look a little sloppy, but that's fine. So let's just see if the loader and everything is working for now. We get to 100%, that scrolls up, and we jump to the next scene. And in that next scene is where all the animation happens. Let's preview it one more time. Progress bar all the way to 100%, that disappears, and then the background's revealed, and then we jump into the next scene. Don't mind if it's a little pixelated, like I said, you can change it to be a text layer. It's just time consuming, and, and I don't want to do that. If it was a project I'm presenting, I'm 100% going to do that. But I'm going to end the first part here. We did the scene, um, the loader scene into the main scene. The next video, we will dive into start animating this project here.